Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video here aboard good old Athena. Up until a few months ago, the steering pedestal was mounted right here. In this video, I'm gonna open up the steering pedestal, take a look at the innards and decide its fate. Ever since removing the steering pedestal, it's been hiding here inside the boat. From what I've been told, it's either a Cobra 4 or a Cobra 4R. The latter, of course, being the favorite model aboard pirate ships. <laughs> okay, that that was really lame. I'm I'm sorry, guys. Here it is, the steering pedestal in all its glory. It could do with a, a little bit of TLC. It could do with a new top plate. The housing for the engine controls have seen better days. The brake cover is cracked, and it could use a fresh coat of paint. If it turns out that there's a ton of issues hiding inside the pedestal, there's always the option of buying a brand new steering pedestal. But for a rack and pinion setup, those are typically around two and a half to three thousand US dollars. So fingers crossed it doesn't come to that. A countless number of people have told me to reach out to Cliff from With Luck Winch Servicing when it comes to advice and spare parts for these old Cobra steering pedestals. That is what I've done, and Cliff was the one that identified my steering pedestal as being either a Cobra 4 or a Cobra 4R, and he was kind enough to send me this exploded diagram. Having this is going to be very useful, so a great big thank you to Cliff, and I'll include a link for his website in the description. Before I flip the steering pedestal around so we can get to the top plate, I just want to say that it doesn't feel like there's a lot of play down here. It feels like everything is nice and tight, but let's see what's hiding inside. Looking at the top plate, you can see there are a bunch of holes here. Those are all extra holes that I no longer need. And also the top plate is pretty corroded and crusty looking. So I'd like to replace it. And it is just a piece of aluminum. So getting a new one cut shouldn't be that expensive. But of course, if the innards are all messed up, there's no need to go through the efforts of replacing the top plate. So if, yeah, let's get this thing off. And yes, those are stainless steel fasteners in aluminum. This is gonna be tricky. Well, so far so good. All six came loose relatively easy. Can I get a drum roll, please? Well, so far so good. It doesn't look super horrible. Not yet, at least. To my, although admittedly completely untrained eye, we're off to a great start here. This looks pristine. It looks like there's only four screws holding the input socket in place, which it looks like we need to remove to be able to get to the wheel shaft. The crack in the brake cover I mentioned a little earlier is right here, but looking at the diagram, it looks like I might be able to get a new one of these, which would be awesome. There's a tiny bit of corrosion here, but it is not bad. Going by the diagram, we should just be able to pull this right out. There we go. I don't want to jinx myself, but I'm starting to feel like this might be the easiest project I've come across here aboard Athena. I mean, this is smooth and there is no play in it. Again, to my amateur eye, this looks absolutely pristine. Next up is the output bearing housing. Let's see if that's where the gremlins are hiding. This feels a little bit more rough and yeah there is a little bit of play here. It might be worth it to change out this bearing. If I understood Cliff correctly, there were three different sizes of bearings used here, which makes sense because as we all know, just picking one and sticking with that takes all the fun out of the guesswork. 
Unfortunately, I think the next step in the process for me to be able to pull this out is to make a small incision with Mr. Angle Grinder down here. But let me just verify that with Cliff before I get trigger happy. It's a few days later and Cliff never got back to me about the recommended procedure for pulling the vertical shaft. In the interest of not making more work for myself than I absolutely have to, I've decided to team up with a fellow liverboard. His name is Martin, I've lovingly nicknamed him Cement Boat Guy because of their choice of liverboard boat. They liverboard a ferro cement boat which is a very cool project that I might show you guys later this winter if they're up for that. But uh, yeah, let's get the pedestal down to the marina workshop. According to the expert, the first thing we're going to try is just to tabity tap 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 this slightly with a hammer to see if we can knock the shaft loose. And this is what Cement Boat Guy is up to right now. He is rebuilding an old generator. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? This one knock. I'm going to go ahead and call that a big, great, raving success. We got everything taken apart and the guts of the steering pedestal are absolutely pristine. The only thing that needs replacing is the bearing on the vertical shaft and Cement Boat Guy is going to see if he can get his hands on a super duper fancy ceramic bearing for me. I'm no expert but he got super excited talking about that ceramic bearing so I'm sure that's going to be awesome. The next step is going to be to redesign the top plate and the engine control housing. And while I'm at it, I might want to go ahead and splurge on some new engine controls here because this one is kind of crusty. But that will have to wait a few days. Today is Saturday, November 24th and tomorrow is Sunday. So I've got a video due. So I better get back to working on the engine. Hey guys, it is a few days later. Earlier today I dropped off the pedestal at a professional paint shop here in Skive. This is my first time ever getting anything professionally painted, so I'm very excited to see how it's going to turn out. Now, because it was such a small part, it was very affordable for me to get them to do it, so I figured that would be a fun little experiment to see what a professional paint job looks like. Today I'm here to grab some measurements off of the old top plate and engine control housing. As you can see this thing is pretty crusty so a new one maybe in stainless steel would look pretty dang spiffy. While I'm at it I've also decided to replace the single lever engine control that's here because the old one is starting to show its age and when I'm going to be redesigning the engine control housing well it makes sense. Measuring this thing would be a lot easier if I could remove the old engine control and the cable. So let's see how this goes. It looks like I need to get to some screws that's on the other side of the plastic cover. But I can't remove the cover for this stupid thing. Okay, enough with this silliness. I'm freezing my butt off here and I'm not going to reuse this anyway, so I might as well... Jesus, this thing just does not want to come apart. And now you get to meet Mr. Angle Grinder. Ah. 
Ah, finally. I wonder if this is a Warrior logo on here, because I've been told Cobra never offered the pedestal with an engine control housing like the one I've got here. So this might be a part that Trident Marine had specifically cast for the Warrior boats, but I don't know. Do any of you guys recognize that logo? Here's a close-up. It almost looks like a W in here. That's why I'm thinking Warrior, but I don't know if that's true. Let me know down in the comments if any of you guys recognize this. After a lot of measuring and a little bit of drawing, I've now got this. And this is roughly what the new top plate and engine control housing are going to look like. Of course, they're going to be in super shiny stainless steel, but still, this is roughly what they're going to look like. I'm going to team up with the guy that helped me finalize the design of the super spiffy diesel tank. And together, I think we're going to come up with something pretty cool. I'm thinking maybe some integrated lights to shine down on the cockpit sole. Maybe extend this out this way to better be able to support a table. And maybe some power and enemy 2000 up through the pedestal guard up to a nav pod. But other than that, I think we're going to stick basically with this design with a compass here in the middle. And, uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you guys a rough draft in a couple of days. Well, guys, this is it. I am out of time. I need to leave for LA in a couple of days. I'd hoped I could show you the finished pedestal base, but the paint shop is not done yet. I can, however, show you something else. Ta-da! The new engine controls. This particular model is nothing fancy. I think this was the rough equivalent of 150 US dollars. The good thing about this model is the fact that there are a lot of them out there. So if I ever need to replace this or find a spare, that should be relatively easy. More than anything, I came here tonight to grab some measurements off of this thing that I need to send to the awesome guy named Kent that's helping me design the new engine control housing. And I think more or less the old enclosure here is the right dimensions, but I think we could make one little modification and that is if we make it just a little bit taller, then I'll be able to get the engine control mounted without disassembling it. That would be pretty convenient. Speaking of the engine control housing, check this out. It's a little 3D rendering Kent sent me of our current prototype. As you can see, the pedestal overall kind of looks like what it did before, but the pedestal guard is a little bit taller and the top bit of it has a bit of an angle to it. That way I can mount a nav pod there in case I ever want a chart plotter right at the helm. Another improvement is the way the pedestal guard is attached to the top plate. On the old one, that was done with some plasticky doohickeys, and those were not that great. At one point while sailing her home, I grabbed the pedestal guard and I just kind of tore it off. That, from a safety standpoint, is not very good. I am super excited about the new pedestal, and we've got the same guy that welded the diesel tank welding on this thing, so yeah, I think it's gonna turn out A-OK. -okay. Now, what do you guys think about the new pedestal? Go ahead and leave some uh, feedback down below. While I'm in LA, I'm gonna go ahead and order the very few spare parts I need. So that's a new bearing and a new brake cover. And that's it. I think I really lucked out with this project. It's been pretty smooth sailing so far. I think there's a lot to be said for quitting while you're ahead. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna end this video here. Hopefully by the time I get back from LA, the spare parts will have arrived and the paint shop will be done with the pedestal base so we can get all of that reassembled. And it shouldn't be too long after that until I can get my hands on the new top plate, the engine control housing and the pedestal guard. So this is all very exciting. Now I do have two pre-recorded videos I'm planning on publishing while I'm in LA. So if you guys haven't already seen the New Year's slash look at what 2018 was like and a little bit of what 2019 is going to be like, stay tuned for that. But I don't know when I'm going to publish that in relation to this video. So yeah, it's all very confusing. But uh, like I said, I'm going to end this video here. So I guess I will see you.